So far we've gone through situational awareness, we've gone through running, and we've gone through hiding. This week we're gonna look at fighting. You've got no option, so Russ is gonna take us through some points on that. Keep watching. So far we spoke about running and hiding, but sometimes you might be in, in a building, for example. Uh, so you need to barricade yourself in a room and obviously the standard device is to get into the room. So what would you add or give to the viewers here? What's, what's the procedure? What would you advise them to do? Quick and simple, you've got to get in, shut the door, lock it if you can, switch the lights off. If you can't switch the lights off, just smash the lights. You've got to make it dark just to give you more and more time. If you can get hold of something like a bin or a locker, push that against the door, that will just make it more difficult for the terrorists or the shooters to get through. Hopefully he'll therefore give up on coming through to try and find you and move off or be dealt with by the security services. Because there's one thing to, that you should really know about mass casualty attacks is that when a gunman comes through the building, he's trying to look for the easiest uh, opportunity. So there's quite a few studies on this. People get to the doors, the shooters get to the doors, they don't try it, they move on to the next door. The reason being is because they want to cause as many injuries as they can in as short a period as they can before the response arrives. So if you lock the door, you wedge it, you bang out the lights, you pull the blinds down, you just have more of a chance of survival than you do if you just basically wander around and run around in, in a frenzy. So concealment, hiding, what we've generally gone through today in this video is just the basic ideas of how you should hide and move behind cover, but almost certainly if you get into a space like this, barricade yourself in and then prepare to fight and defend yourself if you have to. If you watch for the next video, you'll see some simple ideas on how we deal with that. Okay, so we've spoken about the cover from view, cover from fire. Now we're assuming the terrorist or the shooter, I mean me in this instance, has actually broken through. So what's important, if you're standing over there, what you notice is that the majority, if not all shooters, will hold the rifle, as we discussed before, in their right shoulder, yep. because the opening of where the rounds come out is on the right-hand side yep. of the weapon, as, it, as, as the casings come out. So what that means is, weapon's up in the right shoulder normally, or if it's down by the hip, it's still normally on the right-hand side. Therefore, the guys who have gone to the right-hand side of the door, which gives them extra time to be able to fight back if they've got no other option. So as I'm coming through as a terrorist, you're an easy target because you're right in front of me. You don't want to be that. These guys are harder and actually gives them better, more time because in order for me to shoot them in such a, a, an enclosed space, I've physically got to move around to do so. Yeah. If they were on the left-hand side, it would be much easier. I wouldn't have to move my feet. It's just point and shoot. So not only do you want cover from view and fire, but you also want to be hiding in the right place according to what the shooter or the terrorist is going to be doing with that weapon. So generally, as a rule of thumb, try to be on the right side of, uh, of the door. Absolutely, be on yes. the actual side. Okay, in reality, if you do have to fight and defend yourself, keep it as simple as possible. It's a high stress situation, and the last thing you want is something technical in doing that. So, Russ, how would you say that we'll deal with the gunman when he comes through? Okay, so as the shooter comes through, weapon in his right shoulder, as we said, just freeze frame there. I would be, these, these uh, potential victims, if I was one of them, I'd be feeling very confident right now yeah. because of the, the position they've put themselves yeah. in. They are now in a position to regain the initiative. So in slow time, if you come up, all they're going to do is push the weapon against the terrorist body, against the shooter's body. They're now in control. And from this position, I mean, most people that are aware of handling weapons would know that the muzzle, the weapon was going to be quite hot, but that is a chance that you have to take. I mean, in this case, it's your life. You're going to try to get the weapon down and obviously crush and expose the space. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video has been of some help to you. Uh, as always, if you've got any questions and uh, comments, please feel free to leave them.